Excuse yourselves. <laughs> All right, I'm bored. Mary turns to a young guy looking at his phone and taps him on the shoulder. Hey, kid. Fancy buying a gala drink? He goes to her and smiles. Only if the bar is haunted. Honey, I can show you the most haunted place in town. I think I could exercise your demons, if that's what you're looking for. Hey, my checks for dick can't cash. Well. There you go. His eyes go wide. Mary salutes me and Robert. She suddenly pulls me into hug and murmurs into my ear. Uh, when you've known Robert as long as I have, you can tell when something's wrong. Keep an eye on him for me tonight, okay? Sure, Mary. Good man. Mary pats me on the back and pulls away. She takes the guy's hand and leads him down the street. Hey! Take it sleazy, fellas. God help that poor soul. Mary or the kid? Mm. Both. I... I last stop is the burial ground and went to such a hot day of horrifying paranormal activity that I'm not even sure where to begin. There's the wailing ghost of the war man, the vampire of Maple Day, the children of the moonlight. What about the Dover ghost? By this point, the tour guide is clearly irritated with us. What about it? Uh. Oh, nothing. I just think it would be a crime to come all this way here to the cemetery, the actual origin of one of New England's most notorious paranormal entities, and not even mention the infamous Dover Ghost. It's not a real thing. That's absolutely not a real thing. I think someone needs to brush up on their paranormal history. I know tons of paranormal history. I know every ghost story in this area. Uh. I can guarantee there's one you don't. Looks over at me and smiles. Hi. Would you folks care to hear... The tale of how Loomis and I met. Whoa. No. The entire group shushes the tour guide. I'm so sad. Okay, fine, fine. Tell the story. Mm -hmm. Well, it was a dark and stormy night. I wasn't always a paranormal investigator. I... Way back then, I was just, uh... Ha -ha! Traveling grifter. Traveling grifter. Oh, yeah, it's a... I would say. Uh. Yep. We were in the town of town, always looking for my next mark. It wasn't an easy life, but I had fun. Taking from the rich, giving to the poor, actually also taking from the poor. I had a shaky moral foundation. I happened upon a quiet town of Maple Bay quite by accident, but little did I know that the city had a dark side. Now, about the same time, I was just starting out as an apprentice to a rather famous ghost hunter who was an old family friend of mine. I carried the equipment, operated the EVP machine, all that. Wait. Hmm. Yes? Who was the famous ghost hunter? Hey. Well, I don't like to name drop, but Georgia Mathers. Her target group gasps. <laughs> Georgia Mathers? She's a legend. You know her? Hmm. Knew her. Amazing woman. Died mysteriously. Missed you, Georgie. I... Anyway, we were in Maple Bay investigating some reports of strange lights and sounds coming from the cemetery late at night. Now, we had been warned that the old crypt keeper in this place was highly dangerous, but Georgia was never one to shy away from an adventure. We camped out in the center of the cemetery for three nights straight. We endured your so-called wailing watchmen. Wailing ghost of the wharf. Man. <clears throat> Whatever. Your stupid vampire was just a teenager in a mask. But the Dover ghost man, tell him, Loomis. Oh. So there I was, just walking back to my hotel after a long day of working. Working a couple short cons. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Classic pigeon drop scam. Putting out feelers for a rep deal, I was going to steal a baby, probably would have made me rich. It probably would have made it. I found myself walking past the cemetery now. I was, very sus uh, I was never a very superstitious man, but something seemed off. I could hear some sort of creeping uh -huh, or commotion happening deep within the graveyard, and I felt compelled to investigate. Uh -huh. And thank God you did. George and I were conducting a seance in the mausoleum. At first, things were normal. But after an hour, everything went south. Playing back the EVP meter, we could hear a single word. Whoa, whoa. Run. Hey. The air suddenly went cold. Something was very, very wrong. I just knew we weren't alone. We started to hear this faint, distant scraping noise like something being dragged across the ground. It got louder and louder until it was deafening. Some kind of demented howl. Hmm. And then I felt it. Someone... Something grabbing my ankle. Wherever it has the whole crowd hook, line, and sinker, you could hear a pin drop. I've only cried twice in my life. Once was at the birth of my daughter. The other one was when that thing started dragging me. I wasn't sure where it was taking me, but I knew it was no place I wanted to go, and I was sure I was going to die. And when I crossed the gate in the cemetery, I heard a god-awful screeching. 
I ran into the mausoleum just in time to see a man being pulled across the floor by God to this day the mere thought of it makes my stomach it ties my stomach into knots it looked like a man but like I glance at Rob hurt like someone who didn't know what a man was supposed to look like time to put one together the arms were too long the eyes glowed red it was like a walking shadow what did I do what any good person do I lunged for shoot what was the fake name again Daniel let me say first Daniel. I grabbed and an entered into a tug of war with the other whole horses. Uh -huh. I thought I was going to be torn in half. Oh. But I had God on my side. The pocket Bible I always kept on my. He fell out of the, the shirt pocket. And this day I can remember what passage it opened to. Uh, Leviticus is pro. Um, Revelations is. I'm trying to remember. Leviticus is laws. Revolu Revelations is prophecies. Ecclesia uh, seems. We'll go with. Blessed is the. Is, anyway. There. Um, blessed is he that readeth, and they that hear the words of the prophecy, and keep those things which are written therein, for the time is at hand. I don't know where I pulled that verse from. With a horrifying growl, the entire family... I guess that might have not have been important. The entity finally relented. Yeah, the entity finally relented. Daniel and I collapsed on the ground, exhausted. We were both covered in blood. I don't know. That damn creature clawed into my chest. Got me real good. Had to get 16 stitches. Rob pulls down the collar shirt to reveal a long, wicked scar across his pecs. <clears throat> and that's how I got this scar. I... I followed George Mathers to the end of the earth. We faced exor exorcisms, demons, poltergeists that threw our equipment across the room, but I'd never seen George so scared. She was never the same after that, and neither was I. Watching what happened to Daniel and George shook my faith, but I came out of that experience a better man and a better friend. And we've been brothers ever since. The group was given a round of applause as Daniel, er, Robert, and I shared an emotional hug. As embrace, I can smell the cologne on his neck. Wow, Robert does clean up good. I find myself lingering a little too long on the hug. The tour group seems to have bought it, even though he's wiping <laughs> your tear or guide swiping tears from his eyes. Thank you, thank you. It's an honor to be able to share this story. Be sure to watch out for our book. Alright, for our excursions of the supernatural, ice or ghost truckers. I see a shocking true story, seeing you know, the bro's guide to the hottest ghosts. Hmm. Uh I don't know. Robert has to suppress a laugh at the moment. Oh, that's the good stuff. Well, I think you both definitely earned your t-shirts. The guy hands us a cover of t-shirts. He then slips us both his business card and leans in close. Yes. If you guys ever need a professional actor, balloon animal artist, Elvis impersonator, or nude model, please don't hesitate to contact me. Mm. You got it, buddy. After a couple of tourists take selfies with us, we split away from the group and walk home. That was incredible. <laughs> I can't really, I really can't believe they bought all that. I didn't know what you had it in you, so excuse me, Dr. One. Mm. Mm -hmm. That bit about the pocket Bible was aces, although the giving the Dover Ghost, Dover Ghost glowing red eyes is a little cliche. And the Cooper conspiracy theory bit wasn't. Hey. All part of the character. Well, we got the shirts out of it. We arrive in front of Robert's house. Mm -hmm. Want to have a drink? It's not even a question. Yeah. Or should I ask, are you trying to poison me? Um... I guess go with that one. I know where this goes, Solomon. I know the steps. One second I'm serving delicious aged scotch, and the next I'm foaming it in the mouth, and you've taken over from uh, the throat. Mm. Long live the king. Hey. Yep. Leads me inside. I can't help but think about how what Mary said to me. Robert did seem a little off. But that completely disappeared when we were joking around about on the ghost door. I don't know. He's hard to read. While I'm thinking, I hear claws skittering across the floor. Oh god, it's his pit bull. I'm about to be torn to shreds. I shut my eyes tight and brace for impact. Betsy, hey, be nice. I don't feel anything but tiny paws scratching at the shoes. I open my eyes. Betsy? <laughs> Robert's dog jumps away from me, running around in circles and sniffing Robert's legs. He paws a, a, a patch on the head. Hey, that's not a pit bull. That's the cutest, dumbest Boston Terrier I've ever seen. 
Oh, it's okay. Betsy, you're not a pit bull, and you were taken by the Dover ghost. Betsy's made a tougher stuff than that, ain't you, girl? Betsy rolls over for some well-deserved belly rolls. <laughs> I just keep a picture of the large pit bull in my wallet in case of emergencies. Comedic emergencies. We make our way into Robert's living room for a quiet man with arguably oldest pickup truck it can be legally driven this place is amazing there are sleek modern appliances throughout the room and a big flat team uh, screen tv mounted on the wall he has shelves upon shelves of dvds i guess he's lying about being really into se not lying about uh he pours us both a glass of whiskey from well stocked bar in the corner while betsy curls up in a pile of cushions so how did you really get that scar? And don't tell me you got it fishing for Alaskan king crabs on the Bering Sea or something. You trained me too well. <laughs> Robert laughs and takes a sip of his drink. I don't know. My daughter and I were riding our bikes. I hit a rock, flew past the handlebars, and then went, we went to the hospital. That's hey. it. Not a very interesting story. I've never heard you talk about your daughter. Well, I have one. Hmm. That's her. Points to a picture on the wall. Very serious little girl with dark eyes. Yep, that's definitely Robert's daughter. How old is she? Um, 25, 26, not too sure. Does she live around here? Uh -huh. No, Val lives back home in Brooklyn. Works at some new media online magazine thing. Makes buckets, though. Mm -hmm. He suddenly seems really serious. I probably shouldn't press him uh. it. You like Santana? Uh, sure. I do. Uh, I also like Santana. Great. Puts on Santana and takes a seat on the couch next to me. He suddenly downs his drink in one gulp. Hey, are you all right? Hi. Robert leans in and kisses me. The taste of whiskey is burning my lips. I'm surprised at first, but slowly relax into his arms. He pulls away slightly, his lips barely brushing against my mouth. I am now. I can't say anything. <laughs> at best, managing a sigh. Robert leans in, kisses me harder. He pulls the bottom lip between his teeth and bites lightly, sliding his hand under my shirt. My heart pounds in my chest as he lies us both down on the couch. He kisses a trail down my neck, his teeth grazing my skin. I, I just, wait. It's not that. Robert bites down and I have to stifle a moan. Stop. It stiffens up and pulls Hello? away. No biting? No, no, I'm, I'm more than okay with that. I... Something's up. Bert turns a hand through his hair and looks away. I'm fine. I've just been kind of stressed out. Tired. No big deal. Uh, Push it. Yeah. Listen, I want this as badly as you do, but I know something's wrong. I need to make sure that you are okay. Art says down. You don't know me that well, Solomon. I'm not a good person. He takes a deep breath. Oh. I spent my whole life only taking, taking, and taking, and now here I am, an old broken man sitting on top of a pile of everything I've ever taken, alone. But I want to know you. You don't have to keep hiding to, uh, behind fake stories and acting like you don't have feelings. Oh? It's... Huh. Besides, Emily. It's Val. She's visiting tomorrow. She wants to patch things up. Are you... Uh... I'm sorry, but... Is this a bit... No. Right. When was the last time you saw her? Three, four, I think. Months. <clears throat> Years. I sit up straight. Jesus, Robert, what happened between you two? I don't want to talk about it. I uh, sit in silence. Neither of us wanting to look at each other. Both of us unsure what to do next. Mm. Fine. Mm. Things were already bad between us. I cared about her. I always did. Things just got in the way, and before I know it, she was leaving for college, wanting nothing to do with me. Marilyn and I move out here to settle down. We thought it would help get away from all the distractions, all the money, the drinking. But temptation gets to you. I tried to be better, but I just couldn't. And then the accident changed everything. I think about... I think every day about how she must have died hating me. I never became the better man she wanted me to be, the one she always saw in me. She was the last third Val and I had connecting us. I didn't know <coughs> that when I lost my wife, I was going to lose my daughter, too. Robert. I spent so much time chasing things, chasing after things I thought were going to make me happy, that I ruined my only real chance at happiness. Now my wife is dead and my daughter hates me. And then I convinced myself that this... 
just as vaguely in my direction. Who's gonna make me happy? Why do I even try anymore? I'm so sorry. I know how hard it is to... <clears throat> no, you don't. How could you possibly know how this feels? You did everything right. Your daughter loves you. You're a good person. I'm just... I was a terrible husband and an even worse father. I have no idea why she's even bothering to contact me now. I know I'm just gonna fuck it up like I always do. I'm broken. I shouldn't even go. And Robert puts his head in his hands. Tell him what he needs to hear. Yeah. Nothing is going to change until you do. Robert pauses. He looks at me. There's a lot of things in my life that I regret. That I wish I could take back or do over. And it hurts so much to know that I can't. But what I can do, and what you have the privilege of doing tomorrow morning, is to wake up and try to be a better person than you were the day before. Things aren't going to fix themselves tomorrow or the next day, and patching things up with Val is going to, is going to solve all your problems either. But nothing is going to change if you don't, and you can't love anyone else until you stop hating yourself. That's not true. Yeah. Uh, you, <laughs> and you're right. I don't know you that well, but you have the same capacity for good we all have, and I know you can find it. Val is giving you a chance. Don't waste it. But... Robert, listen to me. It's going to be okay. But... I lean over and embrace Robert, pulling him in as tightly as I can. He buries his head in my shoulder, hugging me back. Aww. It's going to be okay. I place a hand on the back of his head and stroke his hair. He shudders, then sobs, and I realize he's crying. Aww. Thank you. We stay there for a while, holding each other. We both eventually drift off to sleep. Aww. Be generous and kind to everyone, unless they're assholes, in which case, kick them in the dick. Yeah, dick kickings are fair. Uh-oh, where'd my pants go? <laughs> that sounds like something out of one of the fucking, like, yeah. playthroughs they've actually did. Alright. Oh, everything finally set up. Love that we're gonna be like just enough. Oh, oh wait, no, this is the ending yep. bit. So, if we fast forward, we might actually manage to fit this all into the last episode. <sighs> we're just gonna have to skip over. Huh? Yeah, keep going, but there is gonna be a part where you're gonna need to back up. Uh, fast right. forward a little bit. Yes. Stop. All right. Click through Pablo. <laughs> yeah. Oh, listen, kid, you're going to need to really... Listen, kid, you're going to need some real-life skills out there, and you're going to make it, or you're not going to make it on the I'm going to college. Mm. Same thing. Look, I know you're not old enough uh -huh. to drink. Right. And I know you're smart enough not to drink until you're of legal age. Uh-huh. <sighs> but hypothetically, if you were to drink, it'd behoove you to drink a glass of water between rounds. Got Ugh. it. Hypothetically. Uh -huh. And if you wake up with a headache, all you got to mm. do is... Take a jar of pickles and drink the pickle juice. You're going to be fine. Ugh. Girl talk. Back to Amanda. Uh, now let me. All right, I'm. Ugh. We're Relax, going. Relax, it's a myth. Hmm. Oh, a... Supposedly. We'll leave them be. Oh, I recognize this. Yeah, that's definitely Robert's daughter. Oh, I don't think we met. Oh, we've met years ago, and I'm here for my revenge. You're Robert's kid, aren't you? <laughs> Spot on. I <laughs> guess that makes you Solomon, huh? Yeah, it's nice to meet you. I'm glad Robert brought you along. He promised there would be free food, so it's kind of hard to pass up. And look, I don't know you, but can I get real with you for a second? My old man's real closed book, you know? Me and him go a long way, got a long way to go. You don't erase decades of neglect in a week. But you sure can get tired of staying angry about it. That kind of bitterness, it poisons you, I think. I'm too young for that. Anyway, lately he's been better, a lot better, a and between him shaving for once and how he goes on, how much he goes on about you, I feel like I get the feeling you have something to do with it. So, thanks. Rob means a lot to me. I'm glad he's getting better. Just keep an eye on him while I'm not around, okay? Or else. I'm kidding. Or am I? I don't know why I'm like this. I think it runs in the family. Hey, hey I love your necklace. And your hair. Mm. And just, geez, your whole vibe mm -hmm. is cool. Thanks. I like your jacket. My girlfriend collects pins, too. So this is my daughter, Amanda. This is Robert's daughter, Val. Nice to meet you. I heard you're the mm -hmm. photographer. Aspiring photographer. I'm going to school mm -hmm. for it. You take pictures? Yes. Welcome to the biz. Of course, it just skipped episodes. Sorry. Val hands Amanda a business card. 
If you're ever looking for an internship, shoot me an email. Anyway, I need to go make friends with that woman over there who's dual wielding wine glasses. Catch you later. It's Mary. Yeah, that looks like. She's so cool. She gave me her business card. She got my hand. Congrats. You just worked uh, her network for the first time. I'm a regular business lady now. Quarterly projection to stock market. Synergy. I gotta keep this party going. Catch you around, pops. Solomon. All right, you made it. Hey. Oh, don't pass him a good Mac. I think it's just the same. Mm. <laughs> yeah. Thanks. Uh, and his dad. I don't know. Hey, bros. Bro. Oh. All right. Hey. Yes. You want to guess the way out of the party? I. Hey. Hey. Robert just stares vaguely at the snack table. Good stuff. Yep. So, I have hands to talk uh. about. She physically threatened you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's my girl. She said you've been doing better. Mm -hmm. Trying to work on the vices. I also showered today. Sit in silence for a moment. You know, every day for me is a battle against my own self-destructive habits. But lately it's gotten a little easier. Uh -huh. Thanks for tacking some sense into me. It's hard to get things through my thick skull sometimes, but what you said that night has actually helped. I'm glad. Mm. I like you, Solomon. I like you a lot. I haven't felt this way about someone in a long time. I'll leave him to catch him for a moment before he pulls away. Takes my hand. Oh. You're special to me. Mm. But I have some stuff I need to work on uh, emotionally before I can get into anything romantic with you. You deserve better than who I am right now. I need to be on my own for a bit. Figure some things out. Of course. I think what you need right now is a friend. I'm happy to be that to you. Mm. Thank you. That means a lot to me. And if you're ever ready for more than that, you know where to find me. Mm -hmm. Let's hunt ghosts sometimes. Sometimes. I would love that. I hope they have their shoulder and watch the sun dip. Do blah, 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 blah. Bargain, bargain, bargain. All right. Well, that's done. Yay. All right. Well, I'm going to have to figure out a way to edit this into the last We've thing. We've dreamed all of the daddies. No, so we have finished all of the game. And we even got the achievement. Yeah. I've got to admit, uh... As far as the game goes, there's a lot of it that is really well designed. Um, Some of the mini games are fucking squirrely, though. Yeah, the mini games are squirrely. The fact that there's like no warning in advance. Oh my God! Look at the pupper. We carved a pupper. Oh my God! It's so cute. That's one of the better ending artworks, actually. Oh, look at the puppy. Uh, but, like, that's really well done. I appreciate the fact that it was take. you know, there's humor, but it's an entirely serious game, as it was obviously supposed to be. Mm. So, that's, you know, honestly, I I'm hope... I'm not going to be able to talk for a week. Yeah, you know, I hope they make a sequel to it. I really do. I, I do know too. they were talking about the rumor is that there will be a dream mommy, but we'll find out if that ever turned out to be the case. I would play the shit out of that. Yeah. Yeah, so would I. Uh, I would play the shit out of that. But anyway. Hey. hey. And uh, so far, I'm doing? the only person in this game who was absolutely awful was Joseph. Yeah, I mean, Brian wasn't... My problem with Brian is, like, entirely me being a shallow bitch. Yeah. Yeah, but all of them likable, good, well-designed characters, except for Joseph, who's a shitbag. Yeah. I mean, he's well-designed, he's just a bag of fucking steaming shit weasels. All right. This is it. So thank you all for watching.